A lot of unhappiness comes about in this world because we can't let other people know what we mean clearly enough. One of the philosophers who can help us with our communication problems is Ludwig Wittgenstein. However, before going to the main topic, let me first introduce my talk. I am Chamsay Balazuela, together with my partner Linnea Judera, we are going to tackle about Ludwig Wittgenstein philosophical investigations. Let us first know who is Ludwig Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein is considered by many to be the greatest philosopher of the 20th century, and by some to be the greatest mind since Immanuel Kant. He only ever published one book during his life, which is Tractatus Logica Philosophicus, where he claimed to solve all the problems of philosophy. He also made significant contributions to logic and philosophy of language, which are still relevant today. Wittgenstein, born in 1889 in Vienna, Austria, to a wealthy family. He originally pursued an education in engineering, but was led by an interest in pure mathematics. To meet and work with Gottlob Frigg, who recommended that he go to Cambridge and study logic, and then he soon have interest in the philosophy. He only spent two years at Cambridge. He worked on the only book he would publish in his lifetime, Tractatus Logical Philosophicus, which was published after the war. In this book, Wittgenstein claimed to have solved all the problems of philosophy and therefore he looked to other pursuits such as gardening, architecture, and teaching. After almost a decade, he returned to Cambridge where he developed new ideas which will be published posthumously in philosophical investigations and other works. He died of prostate cancer in 1851. Investigations Philosophical Investigations, which is Wittgenstein's second most famous book, was published after his death along with much of his later work. It represents a very different perspective because it reconceives of philosophy as a therapy instead of a critic. He claimed that language was actually a set of games that followed particular rules. Meaning of words are dependent on their use and language games that they are being used in. In other words, given different contexts, a single word may have different uses and therefore mean different things. Language games include things like telling a joke, making up a story, or making up and testing a hypothesis. What actually determines the rules of these games and the use of these words is a common shared experience. Grammar is not an external system of rules, but rather a shared set of norms and agreements about how we play the language game. He also preferred the concept of family resemblance between words when offering definitions to the commonly used necessary and sufficient conditions. And now, I'll bring up Ms. Linnea to talk about the first 24 sections of philosophical investigations. The one on the left is a part of Augustine's confession wherein he stated on how he learned language. So, the, describes the process of learning language as associating names with objects. Name plus picture of an object is equal to certain meaning of a word. So, Augustine was only stating in his confessions that the process that he went through in learning a language was through associating names with objects. Then, to the process for learning language, for example, the pencil inside the bug. So if we visualize though natin in our minds na si pencil na object ay nasa loob ng bag na object. And this concept was kind of rejected by Ludwig due to some reasons. Section 1. Five red apples. What is the meaning of the word five? Here, Wittgenstein gave us an example where he sent someone shopping only with a note, five red apples. So yung naging process para ma-distinguish ng shopkeeper, what was written in a note was like this. It was only assumed by Ludwig. First, pupunta yung shopkeeper to a drawer with a label apple. Next, he would look for the word red, then find the color sample opposite to it. Last, he would count up to five while getting an apple from the drawer per each count. So ito yung inaasyong niyang process how we understand words. So yung question dito is, what is the meaning of the word five? Kasi technically, kung i-visualize natin through pictures just like what Augustine stated, yes, we can visualize the apple as a food or a fruit, but we can't visualize the word five because we don't have a clearer picture for it. The way the 5 was included in the phrase was only the way this number is being used, but not how we visualize the number itself, which is to count for the total number of apples. So parang in this way, it's hard for us to understand the phrase 5 red apples using Augustine's way of language learning because there are other ways that we do not have the clear picture in our minds. 
Section 2, the language is to serve for communication. Wittgenstein also gave an example where language is used for communication and in a way that somewhat proves the statement of Augustine. It is a scenario between a builder A and his assistant B. Si builder A nagbibuild using stones and may other materials pa daw siya like blocks, pillars, slabs, and beams. Dito, A is using four language words equivalent to those four materials. Anything na sasabihin ni Builder between those four words ay kukunin ng assistant niya to pass it to him. So, it is a process of such and such call. This language daw is considered as complete primitive language kasi di ba yung thing na sinasabi ni A, we have a clearer picture of it kasi yung foreign na materials doesn't only have a picture representation but in, in our minds but also we have the actual representation or they have rather. Section 3, is this an appropriate description or not? You can make your definition correct by expressly restricting it to some things. Ito yung question na laging lilitaw na, is this an appropriate description or not? And pwede rin siyang masagot na, that description is somewhat correct only in this particular moment and situation, but it won't be considered as the general description for it. Mamaya, mas maintindihan natin yung concept na to, but before it, Wittgenstein also gave, an, gave us an example na, if someone were to say a game consists in moving objects that on a surface according to certain rules, and mag assume daw tayo in thinking that it is a board game, based din sa description na sinabi, pero meron pa namang iba, kunyari, let's think on a, of the table tennis, wherein objects are moving on a surface, ac according to rules, pero di naman siya board games. We can make the description correct by restricting the description to our desired ones. Section 4, Augustine's conception of language is like such an oversimple conception of the script. In this, Wittgenstein also gave us another example that explains Augustine's conception of language. We will imagine a script in which the letters were used to stand for sounds and signs of emphasis and punctuation. Imagine, imagine din daw natin na ini-interpret yung letter na yon in a way na it had no any other functions. So, functions or, or meaning. So, yung conception ni Augustine sa language is like such an oversimple conception of the script. It's like we only need to take everything literally and there's no other definition than the script itself. Section 5. So it also states here how much confusion it would, it would take as if we're using Augustine's system of learning language. As a, a child uses such primitive forms of language when it learns to talk. The teaching of language is not an explanation but training. We take this example that you have a toddler sibling who's only learning to talk. Tapos yung mother mo, she's showing herself to your sibling and nagsasabi na, sabihin mo mama. It is Augustine's system. So, technically, the child will recognize the word mama and associate with the face of your mother. At this point, your sibling is not open pa for some other definition as children his age isolate themselves with a specific meaning causing them confusion later on. Isang halimbawa ng confusion niyan, for example, for me lang, pag medyo lumaki-laki na yung kapatid mo, tapos mayroong scenario wherein he heard a child calling his mother, mama. Para sa kapatid mo, he will be confused. Why is the child saying mama to someone na hindi naman kamukha ng mama niya? Since you have the picture of the mother in his heart and mind, Nah, she's the only mama for him. Section 6. In this, Wittgenstein lets us imagine with the use of example in section 2. So, ya apply natin yung mga nakalagay na situation sa PowerPoint na maybe the reason why they can understand each other well. Whole language of a tribe, children were taught to perform these actions, use these words as they do so, react in this way to the word of others, ostensive definition versus osten ostensive teaching of words. Isang, imp isang important the training na yung pag utter ng words while pointing to something. Ludwig prefers to call this process of uttering words as an ostensive teaching of words rather than ostensive definition. Kasi an ostensive definition is like giving the definition to someone who asks. Pero para sa kanya, hindi pa naman nagtatanong yung mga bata at this age. Kaya ostensive teaching of words. Ang pinakaunang tanong kasi dito, may purpose daw ba yung method na ostensive teaching of words? Sinabi naman ni Ludwig na yes, it may have purpose but it, but it can also lead to confusion. Taking the example of section 2 again, is the purpose of the word slab is for you to imagine the image of the slab? No, but it may help to attain the purpose which is para maiabot sa kanya yung slab na material na hinihingi niya sa assistant niya. Pero ang proble problem na binabrought up ni Ludwig is, what if magkaroon ito ng effect in understanding a word in short confusion? Since the slab here has two meanings, pero matutulungan tayo to have clear distinction by having a proper training in extensive teaching of words. I think yung mga example na may kita natin dito ay yung ibang mga words na may multiple meanings o kaya yung mga word, yung ibang word na ito naman yung meaning but a group, but a group, but a group created a new meaning for it na only them could understand causing for na only them could understand causing confusion. Section 7. In the practice of the 
use of language in section 2. One party calls out the words the, uh, the other acts upon on them. Language games. Dito papasok yung resembling language and language games. So sa example sa 2, one party calls out the words while the other party acts on them. There's a process na nag in learning language. One example is that the learner names the objects wherein he will be the one to utter the word to what the, t the teacher is pointing at. May isa ring exercise na learner, res learner repeats the word after the teacher. Parehas yun ay resembling language. He also takes the example in section 2 as a language game wherein children learn their native language. Yung dalawang example men na na-mention ko kanina can be, take can, be also ta can also be taken as a language game. Language game is a system of manipulating spoken words or render them incomprehensible to the untrained ear or a, or a repetition or creation of words. This definition are from the internet. So, ang bottom line dito is presenting or introducing a word which is new for the learner or to someone that makes it incompre incomprehensible for them. Section 8, expansion of language, connection with the pointing gesture, this and there, number of color. So, dito naman papasok yung expansion of language include the, including the this and there word in pointing gestures, numerals, and number of color samples. Take again the example in section 2 as usual. Numerals can be a series of letters. There and this indicates a purpose in connection, connection with pointing gestures. Lastly, the number of color samples. Isang, isang example itong order na to na, ng builder sa kanyang assistant na D, slab, there. Meaning, yung D for me is a 4. A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, bring me 4 slabs there in building site with the color of this one showing the color sample. Ganon, the longer version of D, slab, there. Section 9, Ostensive Teaching of Numerals So, if inaral ng children yon, including the series of numerals, it should be by heart. A, B, C equivalent to 1, 2, 3. And alam dapat ng bata for what purpose yung pag-aaral na yon. And kailangan ba ng ostensive teaching of words together with this teaching? Siyempre, since some are associating objects with count like A, B, C slabs or 3 slabs. Something more like ostensive teaching of the words would be the ostensive teaching of the numerals that serve not to count but to refer to a group of objects that can be taken it at a glance. Section 10. Section 10. Now, what do the words of, the, of this language signify? But assimilating the descriptions of the uses of words in this way cannot make the uses themselves any more like one another. So now we are in the part of asking that, asking what this word signifies, not what is the use of this word because these are two different matter. A word can also reduce the description by simply signifying the object. For example, slob. So instead of seeing the description of slob, he or she decided to show the object that signified the word slob. That signifies the word that signifies the word slab. It can be used when someone, when sometimes nagkakaroon tayo ng maling understanding to word. Like, akala natin this word is this object, is this object, where in fact, hindi naman pala. Section 11. What confuses us is the uniform appearance of words when we hear them, spoken or made them in script and print, for their application is not presented to us so clearly. In this, in this section, sinasabi ni Wittgenstein na yung function ng words are diverse. It cannot compare to sa functions ng tools na may kita sa toolbox like screwdriver, saw, hammer, etc. Na sometimes, there are other words that have similar function. Let's take for example, if you have both ruler and a grade steel tape measure in a toolbox. There are different words, but they, almost, but they almost have the same function, which is to measure. So, sinasabi dito na, what confuses us is the uniform appearance of words when we hear them spoken or means na babasa natin, since the application of the specific word isn't clear to us. Section 12, not all things are the same. These are the things that has the same name but different object pictures and, func and functions. So, dito sa section 12, we will realize the different meanings or even the application of the same word. Ginagamit na dito yung example ng handle, including handle ng crank, switch, brake lever, and pump. With this, marirealize mari natin na some words doesn't have a single meaning. Example, yung name is yung isa ko ko, wal isa pa ko. Section 13. When we say every word is language signifies something, we have so far said nothing whatever. Dito naman sinasabi na parang wala lang yung every word signifies something natin if hindi natin alam kung ano ba yung gusto natin distinction between them. So let's take for example the use of this and their word since hindi naman sila nabibigyan ng significance as they are really focusing on nouns. We know na they both signify something as they are accompanied with pointing gestures and ginagamit sila para magturo. However, we do not know what they specifically signify. So parang Nawawala ng sense until we make a distinction. It is, the, it is the distance. This para sa malapit na pagtuturo and that para sa malayo na pagtuturo. So technically, they both signify the act of pointing the, the position of one thing, but they are distinct with each other in terms of distance. Section 14. 
all tools serve to modify some things. Dito kina question lang ni Ludwig if may magagain ba tayo after natin malaman if what the tools or a word is modifying. Section 15, to signify. It will often prove useful in philosophy to say to ourselves, naming something is like attaching a label to a thing. Ginagamit ulit nilang example na what if merong signs and marks between A and B, the builder and his assistant. Like for example, this word signifies something something as it bears a mark. So pag pinakita ni A yung mark kay B, B will easily recognize what A is pertaining to. Para mas madali niya makuha yung hinihingi ni A. Section 16, Color Sample in Language Game. In this question, Ludwig tells us that even color samples are part of a language if you want to. Though hindi siya belong to a group of words, it results in less confusion as there is a clear distinction on different things. Section 17, in language section 8, we have different kinds of words. With this section, is pretty, with what this section is pertaining is that we all have different kinds of words in our language that can be classified on our own inclination. Even if yung mga words, sometimes na hindi naman magkakalapit either ng meaning, pero nag-group together, maybe because of the classification that we're looking for. Section 18, is our language complete? Answer dyan is no. Why? Kasi there is such things as new language, improved ones, and meron ding primitive language. Kaya sabi din ni Ludwig na huwag tayong masyadong mabother kung hindi yung, kom yung kompleto yung words na ginagamit na example. Instead, order of words lang yung laging pinapresent. Kasi yung mismong general language natin ay hindi rin kompleto, just like how, the, how he compared our language as an ancient city. Section 19 to Section 20 Section 19. It is easy to imagine a language consisting only of orders and reports in battle, or a language consisting only of questions and expressions for answering yes or no, and, innum and innumerable others. And to imagine a language means to imagine a form of life. Section 20. A word can mean differently as it may be a shortened word of a whole sentence. It may confuse a person who is not familiar with the shortened version of a sentence. Dito pinapaliwanag na it is quite confusing to use the shortened version of a sentence. Since may time na you, what you mean is different from what they've understood. An example indicated in this section is the word slab between the communication of the builder and his assistant. Wherein the slab word that he is pertaining to actually means bring me a slab. But for them, so consider siya na parang degenerate sentence. And parang it's our own version of elliptical sentence. So parang the only one na nagkakaintindihan, syempre yung mga tao na nagsashare ng system of communication. Section 21. In variety of tone of voice, what makes if the one, what, what makes it the one or other? So this section only stating that the tone of voice can change how the sentence is being delivered and in what manner it was spoken is either a statement, command, request, and such. Section 22. Frick's idea that every assertion contains an assumption. This section revolves around German philosopher Frick's ideas that every assertion contains an assumption. So he believes that only meaningful sentence is an assertion and that makes an assumption. Section 23 to 24. Section 23. Multiplicity of kinds of sentence, multiplicity of language schemes. If you, section 24. If you do not keep the multiplicity of the tools of language schemes in view, you will perhaps be inclined to ask questions like, what is a question? Another one is a solipsism. Though it's not really needed, solipsism means, means is a theory only to believe that oneself is the only one who's existing in this world. So, in both sa section 23 and 24, dito parang kinokontradict lang ni Wittgenstein yung idea ni Frege kasi sinabi din ni Frege na only sentences are considered statement na acceptable to make an assumption. At sinabi ni Wittgenstein na, what about the question, commands, and exclamation, and such? Does that mean na hindi sila statement? That's all for sections 1 to 24. To begin with section 25, I'll just read first the excerpt from Philosophical Investigations. Section 25, it is sometimes said that animals do not talk because they lack the mental capacity. And this means they do not think, and that is why they do not talk. But they simply do not talk, or to put it better, they do not use language if we accept the most primitive forms of language, commanding, questioning, recounting, chatting, are as much part of our natural history as walking, eating, drinking, and playing. Whitkin Science just says na, you know, most of the time, we notice the animals still use language. That means we think and they don't think, but really what it means is that they just don't use language. It doesn't mean that they don't think, and what that means is that animals don't play the language games we do, and that makes sense because 
the animals don't have the same form of life that we do. So it doesn't necessarily mean that animals don't think. It just means that they don't know whatever it is they do, if it is some sort of thinking, because it's a type of thinking that we could never understand. He also says later on that even if a lion could speak, he would know what it meant, right? So imagine if a lion walked up to you and said, hello, you wouldn't really know what that meant because you wouldn't know what the form of life is for a lion. Maybe that's what a lion says right before they eat you, for instance. So like in the picture showing na nakangiti yung lion and that say na he said hello to you, it doesn't mean that the same hello to human and animals have the same meanings. Like, maybe the hello for them or for him is meaning lalapain ka na pala niya. So, it would be nonsensical or nonsense. Because a form of life is always an embedded element that grounds or acts as a foundation for the meaningfulness of language and because that's what contextualizes the use of our language. So, in section 26 to 27, it's all about what does it mean to name something. And in here, Wittgenstein says, think of naming as something like attaching the label to something, right? So, instead of a word, instead of saying that a name refers to the essence of something, think of it something that much more arbitrary. The process of naming doesn't have to clarify the meaning of the name, right? So, imagine if I say water, or I say away, or I say oh, hello fine or just say no and these uses of words like are we gonna call these words names of objects like of course not because they don't name objects whereas in fact we do the most various things with our sentences like think of these exclamations alone with their completely different functions they seem to refer to a type of context in which that would make sense more so if i say the word no that doesn't correspond to the object, but it does correspond to a potential context in which I can say or I can imagine someone making a denial at something. Also, saying the word water, the word means something different when yelled by a firefighter in the midst of battle versus whimpered out while coughing at a dinner table, as you can see in the picture in the right side of the presentation. We know that each is calling for and communicating to others for a response that has a very different outcome. Like yung isa is for pagtawag ng bumbero and the other one is for nabubulunan. And we see that they aren't simply stating the name of an object, but their use and meaning. Therefore, it don't depend on corresponding to a particular object. The outcomes of using these words given their language game at a particular time are what they mean. So what we see here is that naming is itself a type of language game, and naming cannot be just some type of ostensible definitions. Going to the section 66 to 71, in the sections, Wittgenstein addresses the role the concept of a language game plays in his work by focusing on the nature of games. He introduces the notion of a family resemblance to explain the concept of games in lieu of providing a definition. Consider the word games, for instance. Is there a common? Is there a common essential definition to what all games are? Of course, no. There is a whole variety of the uses of the word game, like for examples, board games, card games, ball games, Olympic games, and so on. So what is common to them all? Don't say there must be something common or they will not be called games, but look and see whether there is anything common to all. For if you look at them, you will not see something that is common to all, but similarities, relationship, and the whole series of them at that. To repeat, don't think, but look, for example, at board games with their multifarious relationships or having their various types. Now, pass to the card games. Here you find many correspondences with the first group, but many common features drop out and others appear. When we pass next to ball games, Watch that is common is retained, but much is lost. This is very important as it stands for Wittgenstein, is that we have to describe our language rather than simply theorize about it. In ball games, there is winning and losing, but when a child throws his ball at the wall and catches it again, this feature has disappeared. Like games have different definitions, like for others, it is a competition, 
for others it is just for fun or for others naman it is the things to do in their leisure time and the result of this examination is we see a complicated network of similarities overlapping and crisscrossing sometimes overall similarities sometimes similarities of detail but Kensai addresses the complaint that his explanation in terms of language games itself requires an analysis, namely of what a game is. He counters that no analysis or definition of games is necessary. Like, in what we call games, are they all entertaining? Is there always a winning and losing? Instead of a single similarity, he argues that there is a complicated network of similarity. He compares this network of similarities to family resemblances. No single feature in common between all members constitutes the resemblance. Wittgenstein counters the idea that there must be one single similarity between all the uses of language to make them count as language, claiming instead that there are many different kinds of affinities between them. He pointed out that we learn and know the meanings of words by hearing the way other members of our linguistic community use them. We hear board games, card games, and wall games all referred to as games, so eventually our brain piece together what's common between them in a recognition that Wittgenstein called family resemblance. Like, you know how you can just see the relation between people sometimes rather than rigid definitions? Wittgenstein said, word meanings are so-called cluster concepts. There is no one element that everything in the cluster has in common, but they all share something with some other members of the group. Like, nakuha mo yung ilong ng papa mo, and nakuha mo naman yung sense of humor ng mama mo. Samantalang yung kapatid mo, nakuha naman yung mata ng mama mo, and your dad at the tisan. So, you and your sister don't really have much in common, but you do both resemble both parents, but it is not like every concept in the cluster is equal. And with the sign said, that's fine, because... Language is a living phenomenon, and like most living things, there's going to be change and variation. Wittgenstein was concerned with the fault interpretation of words that occurred because people didn't take their context into consideration. So he states that the meaning of the word is defined by the way we use it in our national language and certain social contexts. Thus, according to him, language is used because of this. He develops the idea of a language game. He never fully conceptualizes what this is exactly, but it's supposed to be kind of vague, ambiguous, and diverse. He calls it a form of life. It is no clear or a structured thing just like natural language. You could say that a language game is a type of context that provides us with, with the rules of use of a word within a certain language game. Like there is an agreement on how a word should be used. Language is a conventional nature. It is shaped by conventions and rules that are different in every game context. We can know how to understand words if we know the rules of the language game. We expect the other person to play by the rules and this is how we can know what they mean. You can learn a language game by understanding actions, learning about words and the way they are used, and by learning about objects and things. Language becomes meaningful if you are part of the game and know the rules of use. This can be compared to an inside joke only, like Example, if my jokes are Kalika and the people who are in, which is us, can understand it, we can understand each other because we are part of the same language game and we understand the rules and conventions that shape the use of words. Wittgenstein said meaning is use. In other words, as long as a community or a linguistic community uses a word in a particular way, it has that meaning. Watching the way words develop and change does suggest that Wittgenstein was onto something. Like, for example, the two mouse you see in the lower right side of the presentation. I mean, mouse didn't used to mean that thing, but now it does. We make words up as we need them. And at the same time, words also fall out of use or take on entirely new meanings. Now, this view of language assumes that meaning is tied to a particular linguistic community. And a community might or might not spawn all the speakers of that language. Think about the regional differences in words that might be specific to your town or school or group of friends or family. We have no way of verifying what others mean when they use the word, and they have no way of verifying what we mean. This is meant to illustrate how it is impossible to directly communicate our subjective experiences. Another example is we all use the word red to refer to the color we see when we look at a stop sign. But I have no way of knowing if you're actually seeing the same thing I'm seeing. 
like also in the second example, when I say ball of a basketball, I don't know if you are thinking the same thing that I am thinking. Also, I don't know if your pain feels like my pain or your love feels like my love. Our minds are like boxes. No one else can see what's inside. But here's the thing, it doesn't matter because we must make sure that we are using the same language. And in using the same language, meaning ensuring that we are having a common understanding of what the word means. Language games are social activities together. We create the conventions and rules that make it possible for words to have meanings. There are countless ways language is used in human interaction, and so there are countless language games. So a word does not have just one meaning, it has multiple. However, all the uses of the word are connected in some way. The meaning of a word in different contexts is not completely random. Of course, I'm not gonna call a chair a banana all of a sudden. If use is meaning, you should be able to give a word meaning by using it right. So, if every one of us in this field of one class starts referring to bananas as chom choms, we can say that every member in field of one class can understand each other when the word chom choms are being said, because we are in the same language game. Like, we can call it fellow one class language games. We use words according to the rules and conventions that are part of the language game we are in. We can both assume that we act in accordance with these rules. We are having a conversation in a certain context which provides us with the meaning of the words. We use a part of the language game we are in in this. Wittgenstein also addresses the complaints that concepts delineated by family resemblances will be blurry because they lack distinct borders. He explains that, contrary to possible objections, blurred concepts are perfectly usable. And this ends our presentation. Have a good day!